What is going on, Panthers Nation? Carolina Dad here, back with Mock Draft 2.0. Already, Mock Draft 2.0, the season's almost over. I'm doing it a little bit differently today, but here we are. Let's go ahead and jump right in. So the last Mock Draft that I did, I actually did it live as we went through. You got to see everything click by click, but I wanted to give you a little bit more info today. So I went ahead and did the draft myself. So I drafted everyone so you can see who I drafted. And we're going to talk about each of these prospects and players. And I'm going to tell you why that I picked them. But before we do that, let's go ahead. Let's jump right in. We've got Troy Franklin, wide receiver out of Oregon. Trey Benson, running back out of Florida State. Christian Mahogany, interior offensive line, Boston College. Cedric Gray, linebacker, inside linebacker, out of the University of North Carolina. Anaya Smith, wide receiver out of Texas A&M. And Jordan Birch, defensive line. He's actually more of an edge out of Oregon. I use NFLMockDraftDatabase.com. It's not perfect. I don't think any of these sites are perfect, but at least it'll get, a, get us a closer representation of who and why and, and, and who the Panthers are going to pick. So here we go. Let's take a look at the actual profiles of these prospects and players. All right, y'all. So for my analysis, I am using NFLDraftBuzz.com. Really like this website. I used it last year before I even knew anything about mock drafts and what I was doing. And I like the breakdown. Now, as we talk about the draft, you can see that I went heavy, heavy, heavy offense, getting Bryce two receivers, a running back, and some interior offensive line help. A lot of the guys somehow coming out of the ACC. Now, when I got into this pick, Xavier Worthy was available. He was on the table, but I decided to go with Troy Franklin, primarily because he's a little more proven in my opinion. Like, that's what I think. When you look at the stats and the production that he's had as an offensive player in college for Oregon, and he continues to stack that up and improve, That was the reason that I chose him over some of the other available players. But let's dive into his profile. So again, he's more of your ex outside wide receiver. I think he can develop into a true number one. His current projection right now is around uh, in the second round, top 10 picks that fits in right where we drafted him. Position rank, excuse me, is number nine. Overall rank, number 37. Troy, as a true freshman, showcased his potential by appearing in all 14 games for the Ducks. During his debut, he exhibited glimpses of raw talent, amassing 18 receptions for 209 yards, 11.6 yards per reception. In 2022, he became the true name that you know about. Played in 12 games, emerged as a focal point for the offense, had 56 receptions, 867 yards. This past year is where he really open things up and I'm scrolling back up so I can get the the full profile. 81 catches, 183 yards and 14 touchdowns. So the guy can score, guy puts up production and he is continuing to get better year over year and that is the reason also he's a little bit bigger frame than Xavier Worthy. And I'm not saying that, you know, to to split hairs here, but I do think as I look at his profile 63187 and I believe Xavier Worthy is like 6'1", 172. At least that's what he's listed at right now. So I do like the size difference a little bit more, especially if you talk about NFL wide receivers and being able to compete there. All right, next up. Next up, we have Trey Benson running back out of Florida State. 6'1", 223 pounds, junior workhorse running back. And do we need that? And you're probably sitting there like, why are you drafting a running back? He is projected, I believe, and I got to scroll down to tell you, he is the number two running back, available running back in the draft. And he was available in the third round when I picked, so I said, heck yeah. Overall rank is 64th. He is the horsepower back. And when you think about us, I know we have Chuba under contract and Miles, but I don't think you can have enough weapons for Bryce. And I know that means that we might have to eat cap here or here or let someone go or trade someone. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with starting young, building around Bryce Young with weapons. Get him as many weapons as we can and build around him. So looking at his profile very quickly, Trey 
Benson is from St. Joseph High School. He was a three-star recruit. In 2021, as a freshman, he saw action in two games. And I I was like, it said for the Ducks. And I guess it's tra- all this transfer portal stuff, man. That's what throws me off. It's too many people moving around. For the Ducks, for only 22 yards on six attempts and with uh, one touchdown. So, yeah, here, here, I guess if I've read. After the season, he transferred to Florida State. As a sophomore, he played in 12 games, rushed for 969 yards, 141 carries, 6.9 yards per carry, and nine touchdowns with no fumbles. In the passing game, he had 11 receptions for 109 yards, so very powerful back. As a junior, he saw action in 13 games, ran for 905 yards, 156 attempts, 5.8 yards per carry, 14 touchdowns, no fumbles, 20 receptions for 227 yards, and more involved in the passing game which is something you love to see. Hey, I'm going to take all the weapons I can get. Like I said, help Bryce develop and grow as much as possible. Moving in to the next selection, we have Christian Mahogany. Another steal interior offensive line. I believe he is the second ranked guard in this draft. 6'3", 322 pounds, played at Boston College. Made sense. We need help. We need help, and you can hope that Brady Christensen gets better and that Austin Corbett comes back and that the health is there, or maybe the younger guys figure it out, whether it's Vala or Jensen, Ricky Lee, whoever it is. But until we do figure it out, I do think you take a, either looking out at the free agency market or you draft the guy to fill in that position. Draft projections, third round, we got him in, I guess, what is it, fourth or fifth? Overall rank, he's 84th. Position rank, 16th. So I, I did get the stat wrong on the on his actual position rank. But looking at his draft profile, so in 2020, as a freshman, he saw action in 10 games, played 706 snaps, allowed eight quarterback hurries, three hits, and three sacks while playing left guard. As a sophomore in 2021, he played in 11 games, 706 snaps, conceded four quarterback hurries, two hits, and one sack while playing right guard, so versatility at left and right guard. 2023, as a junior, saw action in 12 games, 862 snaps, seven hurries, no hits, and no sacks while playing most of his position at right guard. Man, and do we need some help at the guard position. So it was a no-brainer for me. No-brainer to pick him up. I don't know why the I thought he was ranked higher than he was. I was thinking about the running back. Still a good steal. Still a good opportunity getting that interior offensive line help. Next on the list, helping the defense out a little bit. Said, let's go ahead. Let's get us a linebacker. Cedric Gray, a guy that I know very well from watching a lot of Carolina football. 6'3", 235 pounds, out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Charlotte native, ball hawk linebacker. uh, Was a preseason All-American. Is one of the best linebackers in college football. However, guess what? I know there's there's other guy, NC State fans, Peyton Wilson. Peyton Wilson was available in this draft. And I think I drafted him in my previous draft, so I decided not to draft him this time around. I think Cedric Gray, if we can get Cedric or Peyton, I'll take either one. Take either one of these linebackers, in-state guys, to help us grow and develop at the linebacker position because we're going to need some help with Shaq if he's able to come back and you know be healthy. But I do think beefing up at the linebacker position. And my philosophy for this draft really was focus on the offense. If there was a, a best available player there, that I could get to help the defense, then yeah, I'd pick him up. But otherwise, it was offense, 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 helping Bryce Young. So yeah, 2020, as a freshman, he saw action in two games. As a sophomore, he played in 12 games, had 68 tackles, 35 assists, while adding in 30 stops in coverage. He had one pass breakup, two interception, and an elite quarterback rating when targeted of 48.8. In 2022, he played in 13 games, had 107 tackles, 32 assists, 54 stops, three pass breakups, two interceptions. And as a pass rusher, produced 20 total pressures, including 14 quarterback hurries, five hits, and a sack. 2023, not as much production, but 18 tackles, or 80 tackles, excuse me, 31 assists and 54 stops. Nine hurries, seven hits, and five sacks. A pretty solid season. Again, I think you could throw in Peyton Wilson very easily, and he would be the pick. All right, folks. Anaya Smith. Smaller build, kind of your slot wide receiver. 5'10", 200 pounds, Texas A&M, senior. 
Again, slot, smaller frame, someone who can develop under Adam Thielen as Adam Thielen is will be in his final year of his contract. He is the 23rd ranked excuse me, receiver. Draft projection is the fifth round, so it was kind of a steal here, and 161 overall. Production wasn't great, but we did see you know development from him, which is another thing that I like to see. So as a sophomore, 43 catches, 564 yards, six touchdowns. Junior, 47 catches, 509 yards, six touchdowns. He only played four games in 2022. I believe he was injured. Uh, four, four games, so he played 15 catches for 291 yards. And then his senior season, he ended up with 53 catches, 795 yards, very nice production, and two touchdowns. Rounding out our picks here, we have Jordan Birch, big guy, 6'6", 290 pounds, went to Oregon, hometown Columbia, South Carolina. So there you go, two states, one team, getting getting in, getting it in. Uh, he is a defensive defensive end edge player, so I do think he'd fit well in the 3-4 scheme. The opposite guy from Brian Burns, possibly, if we can't find someone. So looking at his stats right now, or his overall, he was – Draft projection is six rounder, so yeah, there's going to be a lot of work there. Definitely not a day one, uh, but I do think it's somebody that you bring in to compete with the John, DJ Johnson with whoever we decide to throw out there, um, alongside of of uh, Brian Burns or outside of there. Did have did there you go? Spent time as a gamecock, which made sense because he was in Columbia. Uh, yeah, so he was a five star recruit, joined South Carolina again. I guess it's just the nature of the transfer portal. Twenty twenty. As a freshman, he saw action in eight games, 14 tackles, five assists, six stops, added four pressures. As a sophomore for the Gamecocks, he played in 13 games, had 17 tackles, seven assists, nine stops. As a pass rusher, he talked up 10 pressures, seven hurries, two hits, and one sack. In 2022, he played in 12 games, 35 tackles, 26 assists while making stops. As a pass rusher, he produced 35 pressures, 27 hurries, six hits, two sacks. And then this last season is an Oregon Duck. 21 tackles, 9 assists, 20 stops, 29 pressures, 22 quarterback hurries, 4 hits, 3 sacks. So the production as a pass rusher continued to increase year over year. And again, someone that's going to have to come in that we're going to have to help develop. But I do think in the long run, absolutely something that we need on this side of the ball. So there we go, folks. That is it. We made it through. Let me go back here. It's a little... Blurry, uh, not blurry, but different. Oh, there you go. Look, Drake May was drafted by the Bears, number one overall in my mock. Uh, that's your summary, folks. I hope you enjoyed it. Drop your comments. Let me know who you think we should pick or if you agree or not or don't agree. Hey, whatever it is. Cool. Y'all have a good one. Thank you.